Hi, once again, everyone. Welcome to the last day of our daily devotions as we've been looking at memory. There's a lot of things we could say and talk about further about re uh, remembering in the Bible, how the Bible tells us uh, when Jesus said in the, in the connection with the Lord's Supper, do this in remembrance of me. We could talk about that. We could talk about how Hebrews says, remember your leaders and imitate their way of life. We could go into the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So I, I'm just saying this to, to encourage you to keep looking and exploring in your Bible for what God is talking to or telling us about when he says we need to remember all of these things. But for this last day, I thought since we've looked at the past so much, it'd be fun to look to the future and what our eternal memory might be like. What are the things we're going to remember in heaven for all eternity. Now, obviously, whenever you talk about what heaven is like, that uh, if it's not something clearly revealed in the Bible, we don't want to be too over-assertive. But if there is clear, uh, at least clear enough passages, we can maybe make some conclusions, and we'll do that here today. So the first question that a lot of people come up with about heaven and eternity is, are we going to recognize each other and remember each other from our life here on earth? And I think at least some people think that heaven is such a, a clean slate, it's such a brand new beginning that we wouldn't recognize each other. And, you know, Jesus said that husbands and wives will not be married anymore. But does that mean husband and wife won't recognize each other or, or know that they were married? I'm not sure that was the point Jesus was making. And in fact, there's a lot of evidence as you think about not just husband and wives uh, and, and wife, but but all your loved ones and people you know, I would lean toward the conclusion that we will recognize one another. You can think of the, the transfiguration where Moses and Elijah seemed to recognize each other, although it's possible Jesus just introduced them right there to one another on the mountain. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus talks about us feasting, uh, people coming from all over the world to feast with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and it kind of gives the indication that we'll recognize Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at that feast. When Paul writes his letters to congregations, he sometimes uh, talks to them, as he does in 2 Corinthians 1 or 1 Thessalonians 2. He talks, uh, he speaks in such a way where he says, I'm going to boast about you guys on the last day when Jesus comes. Now, how can he boast about them if he's not going to know who they are? You know, the way Martin Luther looked at this is he thought it would be like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when, at, when God made Eve from Adam. And Adam saw Eve and he didn't just say, well, who's this? Where'd she come from? But God gave him instant recognition. And, and maybe it will be like that. And we'll instantly know every believer at once. I kind of wonder, though, if maybe it'll just be you'll know the people in your life in heaven, but... But then other people, you don't have that instant recognition. Maybe it'll be you're talking to someone and you find out, oh, this is Adam and this is Eve. These are the very first human beings ever. Even if we don't instantly recognize each other, we will have a literal eternity to get to know one another. And that's a wonderful thing. One of the other questions that's often asked about what we'll remember in heaven is not just about people, but all of our past life on earth. And in particular, I think we wonder about our sins. Will we remember our sins in heaven for eternity? You know, the Bible does talk in such a way as if we might not remember them. In Isaiah 65, verse 17, it says, The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. That's pretty strong language that might say we won't know any of the sins. We'll just forget them, forget them and have like a, a memory wipe about all the, the bad and terrible sins we committed. And that is possible. It, it, it seems a little strange that God would either wipe away only our sins or wipe the memory of our sins or wipe away our whole existence on earth. At least the way I read the Bible, that seems strange to conclude that. And, and think, for example, of what happens or, or what you read in, in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 5, the saints in heaven are singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. You purchased men with your blood. In Revelation 6, the saints at the altar are, are remembering uh, how they were killed for their faith, and they're, they're calling out to God for justice. In Revelation 12, 
the saints again are singing that that Jesus has cast down the devil. And all of that seems to conclude when we're in heaven, we're still going to know about things like our sin, about the devil, about how Jesus died to take away our sin. And so when the Bible says we won't remember these things anymore, it's like we said before that we'll know about them, just like God knows about sin, even now in heaven, but not in a way that it counts against us anymore. It doesn't condemn us for, for our sins to know about them in heaven. But rather, we are thankful to Jesus because he has saved us from those sins. It all comes back to our justification. We will give thanks to God, not that we have forgotten our sins completely, but that we remember his mercy and love that has taken away those sins. And for that, we'll, we will be eternally thankful. And finally, ultimately, what we need to remember is this. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, We will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. That's what we need to hang on to. More than anything else, we will be with the Lord forever. We will remember him, see him, be with him forever. That's the encouragement. No matter what we'll remember or forget for all eternity, use that to encourage each other in your life. Let's go to God once more in prayer as we end this week. Oh Lord, we thank you for uh, giving us a, a glimpse into our eternal life, into the things we might remember or might not remember. But in all of it, we know what we will remember, and it's you. Because we will see you face to face, and we will be like you for eternity. We will be perfect and free from sin and guilt and shame forever. So encourage us with that word, Lord, as we encourage one another with these same words. We thank you for this gift you have given us in, in remembering you this week and ask that you would help us to remember you always. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks once again for joining us this week. God bless you today and always.